It's true, you do play your best snooker when you align the shots with your feet, but this isn't exactly what I mean. What I mean is if you put your feet in exactly the right place, the shots themselves actually become quite difficult to miss. So here's how you do it, along with a few other technical tips that also make snooker a lot easier to play. So we're going to begin with the stance, or more precisely what the stance does, which is getting your cue into the right position. Players rest their cues very gently against their bodies as they play the shot, so in theory if you get your body in exactly the right place, then your cue should be on the perfect line. This means if my body's in the right place and I'm resting my cue gently against it, I'm highly likely to pop the ball. But not all players do that. Neil Folds is a great example of a professional player who didn't used to rest their cue against their body. So how did this all work for him? But as long as he kept this gap and his technique consistent, whether or not he potted the ball, just like everybody else, would be controlled by his stance. So that means if I stand in the right place, that means my body's going to be in the right place and my cue is going to be exactly on the right line. So here's how you work out exactly where to stand. Start off by lining up a fairly simple shot, absolutely dead straight, and then draw a chalk line straight back from it across the floor. If you don't have any chalk or it's somebody else's floor, you can always just imagine where this line is. We're going to use it to work out where your foot goes on your cue side of your body. Because this line points directly to where the cue ball needs to go in order to pot the ball, where you stand relative to this line makes a big difference. Because as we've seen, where you stand affects the position of your body, and the position of your body determines exactly where your cue is. Generally speaking, if you stand a little bit too far to the left hand side, you'll miss shots to the left, and if you stand a little bit too far to the right hand side, you'll miss shots to the right. The exact position you stand in will be unique to yourself, depending on exactly how tall and wide you are. Sean Murphy and Kyron Wilson probably stand in very different positions. If you just keep experimenting with this, eventually you'll find a place to put your foot where it feels easier to pot the ball. Once you've found the perfect place, just remember where your foot needs to go. You can even mark this somehow if it makes it easier. Where you place your other foot isn't anywhere near as vital. As long as it's wide enough to keep you from wobbling too much and it feels comfortable, it won't really matter. With every shot you play from now on, you want to be getting your foot into the right position, but you don't really want to be looking down at it. As I showed in the previous video, you can use your cue as a guide to working out the line of the shot, and then you can just feel the position you need to put your foot in underneath your cue. But our next technical tip isn't about getting your body in the right place, it's about keeping it there. Alex Higgins was one of the best snooker players of all time, but as these slow motion images show, he used to move around a lot on the shots. Steve Davis believed he wasn't as talented as Alex Higgins, but because his technique was so much more consistent, that's why he won a lot more tournaments. But unfortunately, staying still on the shot is actually a lot harder than it sounds. Watch how much the yellow dot moves here, especially when I strike the cue ball. The camera is strapped firmly to my head and I'm not using any form of stabilisation. It felt like I was staying completely still on these shots, but as it turned out, I was moving quite a bit. The more you move, the harder it is to line the shot up properly, but also the harder it is to work out exactly what just happened. And another problem is, the harder you try to stay still on the shot, the more likely you are to tense up. And the more you tense up, the less likely it is you're going to be able to push the cue through straight. And that could in itself cause body movement. Fortunately, there is a way to remain 90% still that doesn't cause you to tense up in any way. And that's all in fact about your bridge arm. So here's how to fix it. When you're on the shot, force the elbow of your bridge arm down onto the table. This has the effect of preventing the rest of your body from moving, but also stops you from tensing up. 
Sometimes you're not going to be able to do that because there's going to be things in the way, like these balls, for example. But what I'm still doing is forcing my arm downwards. I'm not forcing it onto the table, obviously, but I'm still putting pressure in a downward direction on my elbow. And it just has the effect of keeping my entire body still. This is actually quite a good way of keeping a good technique in pressure situations. But there's another part of your technique that's worth looking at when everything's going well. And that's the angle of your wrist because this also has a big effect on how well you're able to play the shot. Some players play with their wrist out wide and some players have their wrists turned into their bodies a little bit. But the majority will have a wrist action that's somewhere in between these two extremes. It really makes a big difference to your game if you can get it right. Just like the stance, there's not going to be one wrist technique that works for everybody. You've got to find something that works for you. And there is a way of doing that. This time it helps if you play shots over a slightly greater distance, but again, if your wrist turned out too far to the right, the ball's likely to go to the right, and if your wrist turned in too far to the left, the ball's likely to go to the left. Again, with some trial and error, you can find the right place that makes it easier to pot the ball, but this is a lot harder to work out than your stance. This is one of the most dangerous parts of your technique to look at, because sometimes the more you think about your wrist action, the more you end up getting wrong and creating problems that weren't even there to start off with. The problem is, unlike finding where to stand, it's very easy to get confused with this. I've genuinely been confused before on which way I was rotating my hand because when you're only doing it a small amount, for some reason it can get confusing and that makes it a real problem to actually pot anything and you just lose all confidence. Thinking about your technique too much like this rarely helps your game. You're probably far better off to just wait until you're playing fairly well and potting some balls and then to think of your wrist as a clock face. Then when you're playing well, you can think to yourself, well, my knuckles were at about what felt like four o'clock. So you just try to repeat that. That's really all you should and can do with it. Before we do any more, we're just going to find Zen from Kiev, Ukraine, which is there. Earlier in the year, when I was looking at how Ronnie O'Sullivan's technique worked, I noticed something interesting while watching slow motion images of him pulling the cue back and pushing it through. Now this is heavily exaggerated, but what I noticed is as he brings his cue back, he dips it down a bit before bringing it back on the right line to play the shot when he pushes it through. So why does this help? The problem is, after you pull your cue back and it stops, that little bit of acceleration at the start can cause it to wobble just a little bit. There's no guarantee just because your arm's gone back in a straight line, it's going to go forwards in a straight line, and that first little bit of acceleration can be difficult to deal with. Ronnie's solution to this is to have a cue action that very slightly goes around, so in a way, it never really stops moving, so you don't get that awkward pause at the start. I don't know that this is the big advantage I think it is, but it does at least feel smoother. For some reason, it seems to work really well when the cue ball's close to the cushion and you're trying to dig down on the white. However, if you do this a little bit too much, you can often find it's difficult to get the exact height you're trying to hit the cue ball at and often find you miss hit and go completely in the wrong place. When I first started trying Ronnie's technique, I found I did this a lot because what would happen is I'd bring the cue back, dip it down a bit and bring it back up to the wrong height and say I was trying to stun for the black, I wouldn't quite bring it high enough, for example, and I'd end up going down there, and I wouldn't know what happened because it would happen so fast. It just took a little bit of practice. I found it was fairly easy to over-exaggerate how much you dip the cue down, but as soon as I stopped doing this, I seemed to get used to it fairly easily. But before we go, let's just find Viet from Hanoi, Vietnam, which is there. It's probably not his name though, but never mind. By this point in the video, the majority of people have stopped watching, so we can now look at what are essentially some secret practice routines, starting with this one. This one's simple and looks a bit pointless, but it's a fairly good way of practicing near mid-range pots at a firm pace. What you need to do is keep potting the yellow and green alternatively and just see how many balls you can consecutively pot. About 40 would be a really good score. 
This will also help with your potting. Set up six reds about halfway between the bulk line and the blue spot and see how many you can pot straight into the corner pockets from the D. If your technique's working really well here, then ideally you're going to be able to pot all six balls in a row. Three into one corner and then three into the opposite corner. The main reason you'll miss these shots is it's very difficult to line them up consistently. So if you're struggling with that, have a look at my previous video which is in the card right now and it'll help you with it. Our final practice routine will allow you to screw the cue ball back a lot smoother, effectively giving you more cue power. And I'll show you exactly how that works in the next video which unfortunately will be free of any creepy leg shots, but will be out next week. If I've made that video already, you can click the link here. And remember, don't just watch, play, and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.